Hello everyone and welcome to Kitchen Chat TV on the road. I'm your host Margaret McSweeney and I'm so delighted you are joining me literally on the road in Canada today here in the back seat with Chef Johnny Curran yeah. and I can't wait to hear more about what he's doing with vegan recipes, vegetarian recipes. So welcome to Kitchen Chat. Thank you for having me. Oh this is fun. I've never done an interview in the back seat of a car. <laughs> here with some friends too well first of all could you tell us about your restaurant in canada and you're about to open another one yeah so um basically we opened thrive energy lab about five years ago in kitchen waterloo um it's a vegan vegetarian restaurant but pre predominantly vegan um it's been going great for the past five years so uh you know we've built up enough clientele base and enough um kind of you know, letting people around us, around the community know about us, that it's kind of spread out from Kitchen Waterloo and gone over to Toronto. So then we had some business people come from Toronto and ask us if we could maybe duplicate the concept out there. So we're going to be looking at that in the next um, four to five months and see what happens. Oh. So I think it'll be really great. Yeah. Yes, congratulations. And on a side note, isn't it just such a culinary irony that we're talking with a chef from Kitchener? <laughs> 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 well, let's talk about the dishes because we're all about food here on Kitchen Chat. What are some of the featured recipes you like to prepare in your restaurant? Um, so the way we like to break our food down is we have desserts, uh, food options, and then drink options. So. Um, was there any specifics that you wanted to know about or just anything? Oh, I think just anything. Is, is there a specific cuisine that you focus on? Because um, I think, you know, when people think of vegetarian, a lot of Indian cuisine, Mediterranean, is, is there um, a certain focus? is mm -hmm. that we want to take mindfully crafted whole foods um, from, you know, uh, that are locally sourced, as close to lo being locally sourced as possible, and then the rest organic from, you know, around the world. Um, so with those, we sometimes create dishes uh, that people already know of. So we'll take um, something that someone's familiar with, like a burger or um, maybe even mac and cheese or you know, a certain sandwich or some kind of dish, curry, but we'll just make it completely vegan or completely vegetarian to show them that you know, it is possible to have that food, but to have it in a healthier way. Um, so that can be done with almost anything. Um, other than that, I traveled a lot. So um, where my travels took me, some of the places that I went to, such as Thailand, um, Spain, um, Turkey, um, Japan, uh, those sorts of places influenced me a lot because of the way that they eat. Um, they tend to eat very clean, um, not very much meat. Um, if they do have meat, it's just a little bit here and there, not too much dairy. Most of it is just fresh fruit, produce. And the thing I like about um, some of the other countries, like uh, Japan and um, say, uh, like Thailand for example they use things like a lot of fresh herbs and roots as well as Japan uses fresh like uh, medi well not fresh but medicinal mushrooms so you know when you when you put those types of foods that people aren't familiar with into the recipes then you can create things that are uh, their power um, their healing power um, and it can all be very specific as well is amplified tenfold or more so yeah. Yes, that is fascinating. I, I love that concept of you can turn any of your favorite dishes yeah. that are not vegetarian into a vegetarian yeah. type of dish. And of course, with the hamburgers, the, the veggie burgers. What has been the most challenging comfort food? <laughs> I don't know if it was challenging, so to say, once I figured it out. but. I thought the idea of it would have been challenging. So someone came once and we always have people coming in and asking, you know, giving us challenges. Because we say our philosophy is, again, we'll accept any challenge. So this, uh, we have a lot of construction around us these days. So um, this one construction guy came in and he was kind of, you know, just looking around. He didn't really look like he was going to get anything. And he, uh, he asked if we have meat or what. And I said, no, obviously. And he said, um, oh, so you don't have like a Big Mac or... Uh, um, a Whopper or anything like that and I said no we don't have anything we don't have those but we have something like it which was our veggie burgers and he says oh well if you can make one of those one day I'll come back so then he walked out the door and I thought about it and I was like okay you know what I ran out there and I got him and I said you know what come back and are you 
you know, doing construction around here? I said, yes. I said, come back in about three or four days and I'll have a Big Mac ready for you. <laughs> and if it doesn't taste, say, over, I forgot what number I said, like 80 or 90% like a Big Mac, like if you're not fooled, fooled, then obviously I'll lose the bet. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, I took some time and I kind of researched a Big Mac because I don't really eat them. Um, and then I got the sauces and everything together and all the other interesties that kind of make a Big Mac taste and feel texture-wise and everything the way it is. And then I went and sourced all my products and, and made it and it literally tastes like a Big Mac. So the guy came back and had it and he's brought all his friends over. It's <laughs> construction, <laughs> which is really funny actually because we had, um, you know, about seven or eight really muddy covered with concrete guys sitting in this nice restaurant eating Big Macs. Oh. It was pretty cool. <laughs> and then, um, so yeah, that was the one really challenging thing, I think, but we did it. And then now the Big Mac's actually going on the menu because it's so popular and everyone loves it that we're going to put a healthy Big Mac on our menu, but it's called the McThrive. I so, love yeah. that McThrive. And I hear you make incredible cheese. The, or let, let's call it fromage because <laughs> yeah. it's not real fromage but fromage how do you do it um, it's funny because you can actually make the cheese taste exactly like real cheese um, so the real cheese tastes like real cheese not because of necessarily the milk or any of the other ingredients in it it's the bacteria culture that they put inside the cheese that's developed that allows the cheese to kind of, and depending on its aging process and whatnot, formulate different flavors. Um, and, you know, in different countries, different milks and different things like that have different bacteria. So instead of using bacteria, what we use is we use cashews and then we use, um, so what you do is you can get rice and then you let rice soak in, uh, in water for a little bit. And then that rice I'm sorry, that water will develop the bacteria from the rice because rice actually has bacteria in it. And then when you let the rice sit, uh, the water sit, take the, remove the rice, let the water sit for a little while. And that water is your bacteria. So then what you do is you make your cheese, uh, which is like generally out of some kind of nut. You need a fat. Um, we use uh, cashews, for example. We'll blend the cashews. First you soak them in hot water. Um, and then you blend them and then you add your things in there like nutritional yeast which tastes cheesy uh, you can add your culture in there which is the water uh, fermented water that we did and then uh, you can add other flavors in there too for if you want it to taste like mozzarella or cheddar or gouda or, or feta or you can do anything you want and then um, then what you do is you mix it all together and then you just let it age and the more you age it the better it gets so for like our cheddar cheeses we aged them for I mean I aged a gouda for almost a month one time and it was delicious and then for cheddars a couple weeks but the more you age them it's like you can get up there in your different in intensities of flavor so you can get like you know old aged cheddar if you age it for months and months and they don't go off they they're like cheese I mean it, they might get a little moldy but it's you can cut that off and some of it's actually good mold um, uh, but yeah you can uh, you can literally create cheeses out of out of uh, nuts and, and and a few other creative things that you can do yeah that is fascinating that you don't need the dairy yeah. to it create so a much like cheese that you don't necessarily I mean you can literally fool anybody um, if I had a platter of cheese here and had half that and half real cheese, you take it and look at it, smell it, and it would look and taste like real cheese too. So you might not know. Yeah. So we use it on our burgers, um, uh, you know, on different sandwiches, just to show people that, you know, okay, just because you're vegan or vegetarian, sure, you can get a delicious sandwich, but you don't have to avoid cheese. A lot of things that people really miss when they leave um, you know their old diets a lot of people say cheese in fact meat is one of the least things that people say it's cheese that people a lot of, they, they, they just miss it for some reason you know so yeah now it's completely possible and then the cool thing is um, just last week someone dared me to make the tostito cheese uh, the you know that kind of runny yes. uh, tostito cheese for for dipping for nachos um, and yeah that was a bit of a challenge that took me a while to kind of get it perfect but eventually I got it and it, it, it literally um, <laughs> tastes like Tostitos cheese so we make nachos and then we made um, a uh, um, the sandwich that was uh, like a Philly cheesesteak 
I mean, without that cheese, it's impossible. You can't make anything that tastes like a Philip cheesesteak. So with that, we what we did was we sliced mushrooms and then tempeh, which is like a, a fermented tofu, an Indonesian style of healthier tofu that's fermented with culture in it. Then we used those with the mushrooms and then we uh, toasted, obviously, like a, the not a baguette, but like more of a, a sub bun. And then uh, we put all that in and topped it with the cheese. and. Yeah, it literally tastes like a Philly cheesesteak, so it's well, really cool. I think you should start a reality show <laughs> about how you turn dishes into vegetarian, veg out. That's or uh, <laughs> a really, really good idea. You yeah. should consider that. Challenge, tell yeah. me. Because then what you show is you show people that, for example, some people like to have something. So say they're healthy, generally, but they really like this one thing, and then they call it a cheat day, and every week they have whatever that is. Um, and it's usually pretty bad for you, let's not lie. So if you could have it with the same flavors and the same satisfaction, the same textures and everything, which one would you choose? I'd probably choose a healthier one, right? Sure. Um, but the other cool thing is that you can teach other people, like kids and parents and things like that, that you know you don't always have to choose the the bad options. Um, you know, whether it's for yourself or for your children, your family, that you can. I mean, our thing is literally you can anything you can make healthy. So um, you know, gelatin, for example. Yes. Gelatin is, I don't know if you know how it's made, but it's awful. I, I don't want to know how yeah, it's made. We may want to leave that out. Um, it's a meat-based product uh, made out of bones and things like that that are boiled at extreme temperatures. Um, and that creates like this gelatin. So, um, and you know how many things have that in it out there? There's so many products and most of them are candies and these delicious treats that everyone loves so much. Like wine gums and gummies. and. Um, that's something that is literally in everything or a lot of things but people just don't know so there's another company coming out that it was first of all thought that it was impossible to make gelatin out of, of something else other than the way it was made this company's coming out and now uh, making gelatin out of a uh, plant-based so you know it, everything is possible so yes. yeah that is great now of course I have a very big sweet tooth so how do you make vegetarian desserts um, oh, really uh, yeah I, I know it's and I, I guess maybe I'm thinking more vegan as well too but yeah. what are some things Would that we like can do at home vegan? it doesn't yeah. both vegan and vegan vegetarian is, um, vegan is you know really interesting because so when you're making desserts, um, a lot of desserts, say like the more decadent side of desserts, have things like fats in them, right? They have sugars, obviously, which are easier to mimic. Um, there's all sorts of things out there that um, you can use to um, either mimic sugars or sweetnesses or have a healthier version of, uh, rather than just processed white sugar or high fructose corn syrup, things like that, um, which are extremely bad for you. Um, so, you know, like cane sugar or honey or maple syrup. Um, there's something called Lacanto out there. Lacanto is a dried monk fruit. So they just basically they take the juice of monk fruit and dry it. And it literally looks like granules of sugar and tastes like sugar. Versus stevia. Stevia is a leaf. Um, and it just, it fools the mind into thinking it's sweet. But it actually contains no sugar at all. But stevia has a very strong aftertaste so after if you use it in desserts people don't like the flavor of it afterwards sometimes they use it in uh, some like vegan soft drinks and things like that um, but so what we'll do is our big thing is creating desserts um, avoiding the things that people don't like the most so changing out the sugars for healthier sugars and then taking out the carbohydrates and replacing those with protein so what you do is it, you can use uh, like a finely ground plant-based proteins. Um, Iron Vegan is a very good one, um, or Sun Warrior Protein is another very good one. Very finely ground and very, uh, like a very high quality protein profile. Um, you know, avoiding yellow pea protein and things like that, and using amaranth and sunflower protein, like good quality proteins, highly absorbable. So then what we do is we incorporate 50-50. So we'll take, say for cookies, for example, we'll take 100% of the flour, take 50 away and put 50% protein in there so now you have um, a cookie that has zero grams of sugar but tastes like it has lots of sugar um, much much less calories half the calories and actually good fats in there too plus protein so you know it tastes the same as the bad one but now you're you're avoiding GMOs you're avoiding things that you're, well you're eating organic obviously um, natural 
uh, plus you're kind of getting things that you wouldn't have gotten with the other desserts that would benefit you, you know? So um, we make things like, uh, we, tr we don't try to do everything because a lot of places do a lot of desserts. We just try to pick the ones that, you know, we feel are unique um, and that we're just going to do a little bit differently. So I love Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Who doesn't? So I made um, a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. We call them Peanut Butter Cups and Almond Butter Cups. They're about three or four times the size of a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup and they're um, basically nut based. So we take nuts and dates and ground them and form a base. And then for the center is either almond butter or peanut butter, but we'll infuse coconut oil in there. Uh, because when you put coconut oil in a fridge, it solidifies. So it'll actually hold the shape. Um, so then that's the center part and the top part we use just a pure cacao uh, chocolate and on the top we, we do goji berries, chocolates and nuts in a cluster. And then that's one of our desserts, so it's either peanut butter or almond butter and it's complete, there's no extra sugars in it, completely natural, completely healthy and it literally tastes bad for you. Like when someone <laughs> has it they'll be like, oh this can't be good for me. But it, there's really, no, I mean, I mean, wouldn't want to have 10 of them in a row, but you can definitely have one and not feel guilty about it because there's nothing bad in it. Um, we make cakes out of avocados, like a chocolate avocado, avocado ganache cakes. So avocados, again, is a fat. Um, when you use the fat, instead of using mar margarines or butters and things like that, use an avocado. Because an avocado, you can actually make savory or you can make sweet, depending on, so for example, um, like a guacamole right that's one way you can take avocados or if you add some you know maple syrup and um, cacao powders and things you can literally turn it into chocolate uh, like a chocolate ganache and then what you do is if you infuse coconut oil into that then you can set it so if you pour it into a mold and then put it in the fridge it'll set and then you can have again a different base or whatever you want you can garnish it however you want so those are those then we do cool things like fun things we do like popsicles so we you know blend our smoothies and we make them to various different popsicles but not blended to its puree chunky so you actually can see the part bits of kiwi and all the cool things that you're eating and then what we do is for the popsicles so we do popsicles and fruit roll-ups and for the fruit roll-ups we just use our dehydrators and we again they're basically like um you almost make a smoothie and then you just dehydrate it but for those what we do is we put in things like just to amplify them we put in superfoods um, into them so you, you know uh, goji berry again is an example or what we do is we use roots herbs and tinctures so some of them will be for say you're studying for an exam and you, you need mind brain power so yes. we will always need some, brain power exactly <laughs> some ginkgo biloba and some things to help focus and to kind of uh, you know help the frontal lobe retain memory or will you do something like maca and some uh, ginseng if people are stressed out and their adrenals need replenishing so they can eat something fun and enjoy it but also benefit their body too so it doesn't what I mean is you know it, say you're feeling stressed you don't always have to go and get something that tastes kind of disgusting and kind of oh okay now I'm distressed if you eat something fun, that kind of distresses you as well as the stuff inside it. Yes, you know I, mean? I think those, so, the chocolate butter cups, yeah. <laughs> peanut so butter cups that you make. We do uh, muffins, oh. cook, like different cookies. We do carrot cakes, like a whole bunch. I have two really, really good pastry chefs yes. and they're even more creative than I am. So they oh. just kind of, you know, um, reflect their ideas on me and I usually always approve and then they just go ahead and um, make beautiful desserts for everybody so but everything is mindful and healthy yes mindful and healthful and just making that one change and but, but before I ask the other question if we can back up a second you were mentioning ingredients I've never heard of the the top of a bum what was that um, for stress Copal Obama uh, so for stress there's uh, stress basically the way it works is you have your brain producing um, like a um, creating cortisol and other chemicals that stress you out it's that fight or flight thing you know if we used to need that back in the day um, when something stressed us out but we no longer need that but it's still active within us so what happens is every time you get stressed out anything anything that happens a loud noise or something your 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 body will release some cortisol and other chemicals to um, help you deal with what's going on um, but what happens these days is that even the littlest thing will cause that. When that happens over and over and over again, um, 
our bodies have as much cortisol to release as it wants, but our adrenal glands only have v very limited supply to counter those things. So that's why a lot of people are depleted um, with, uh, you know, uh, and, and then you go into different various forms of uh, stress and, and becoming depressed and things like that. So if you just meet it up here somewhere, it's easy to deal with and you can things, use tinctures and things like that um, or foods as well or combine the two. Uh, so one thing is called maca and maca is a, is a root um, from Southern America um, and basically it was used even by the indigenous, indigenous tribes back then um, it doesn't directly affect stress, but, but it does it re re replenishes your adrenal glands, which again, if they're active and full, they can counter the cortisol, so it lessens your stress times. So if people are depleted when that happens, then they just get stressed out and they stay stressed out. But if your body has, has the adrenal glands are active and you have you're putting the mac and certain things in your body, then when that happens, your 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 body reacts to it, calms you down, and then maybe you might have been stressed for a few minutes, but that's it. Um, so mac is one of those things that many people don't know of here that we use um, along with other things like ginseng and and uh, whatnot to help relieve stress in the body. Shishander berry is also really good at that. Shishander berry is uh, is like a berry from Tibet, um, but you can get it. In other parts of the world too so you know just don't have to use one thing use a bunch of things and what I do is I look to I traveled the world for about 15 years so I went to all these different countries and just tried to find out what they use and the funny thing is is it's the same everywhere everywhere has stress everywhere has this everywhere has that but it, they all choose different ways of looking at the same thing and dealing with yes. it because they have different things around them so you know Maybe in that country they only have that, but the good thing is this in, in this country and because of the way things are now, we have the ability to get all those things to us. So then if you can learn how to combine things, you can make these even more powerful. Yes. You know, so um, those are ways of dealing with stress. For example, ginkgo biloba is a great thing for the frontal lobe. It helps retain memory. Um, you know, different forms of ginseng, um, panax ginseng and other forms of ginseng as well. Um, those help a wide variety of things, not just for energy, yeah. um, so they can help with, you know, like uh, stress as well, um, but they can help with, you know, like um, focus actually, um, just calming the body down as well, or giving the body the energy it needs if you're too depleted. Um, yeah, so there's just, just basically, uh, like there's so many things it's hard to name, but the one place that's really good to look is like in Chinese medicine. That's where they use a lot of those, you know, roots and herbs. Some of them I don't agree with, you know, things like shark's fin and whatnot and the use of like animals. I understand why they do it because animals have energy and then if you can take that, same as food, you can take that and ingest it, but I think there's other ways of doing it. Um, but yeah, it's basically that philosophy that, you know, there's all these things available to us and things that you wouldn't even think can help you can actually yes. help you. Yes. Um, you know, for example, I didn't even, just a year ago, I didn't know anything about lemongrass. And then I found out lemongrass is actually not just something that tastes good, but it's got huge properties in the body. So I started making teas out of it and using it in our products and juicing it fresh for people. Because when you've ever had fresh juiced lemongrass before? Yes. Oh, this is fabulous. And as a disclaimer, Kitchen Chat is not a medical show. Yeah. So please consult yeah. with your authority on that. Yeah, we but like say we're like nature's kitchen. Nature's kitchen. Nature's and nature's food as nature's medicine nature's in so many ways, yeah. too. Yeah. Yes, yes. So who would you say of all the chefs has really inspired you the most? Oh, wow. Okay. And who would you most like to cook with in your kitchen? Yeah, that's an awesome question. So, um, one of my favorite chefs growing up was this guy named Charlie Trotter. Um, Charlie Trotter is just, like, he's in Chicago, or he closed his restaurant down in Chicago, but he was, for me, he wrote this book, um, it was called Raw. It was my first experience with raw cuisine and what he did with it. I mean, before when I read about raw cuisine and looked at it, I don't want to sound rude, but it was almost like, you know, two hippies cooking in a cave somewhere with like, you know, a wood fire or something. It just seemed so backwards to me. But what he did was he, he used everything that he had and then, you know, all his knowledge and did raw food with that. And it was basically like high end, you know four star quality raw food um, and it was just like the things that he did 
I remember looking at that book for almost a year. My mom got it for me for my birthday, and I just absorbed everything into it. So when I opened Thrive, um, a lot of my recipes were influenced from that. Um, and it, it wasn't just that. Like he, he was a kind of chef that constantly being creative constantly you know searching like can I cook with that can I what can I do with that if someone said no you can't do that he would be the first one to go and try it and that's why I love him so much is because he was like he, he remained I love Albert Einstein too and the one reason I love Albert Einstein is because he remained a child throughout his entire existence because he said that basically the reason why he was able to do and come up with all the information they came up with is because he kept his child's mind yes. so he could let the creativity flow and that whatever the universe wanted to give him give him when you grow up sometimes that doesn't happen as much you know <laughs> so unless you go to grill <laughs> so then um for me he was just he allowed me to see that it was okay to literally do and try whatever you wanted to and not be scared even if a chef told me that won't work um, which they do all the time I, w I would have not done it but with Charlie I'm like you know what thank you for what you think but I'm gonna go try it so he he just opened the doors for me and especially broke me into like the vegan and raw world um, and then the other guy is um, uh, chef Morimoto so yes. from Hell's I, no not from Hell's Kitchen sorry um, but chef Morimoto for me is wow well, how do you explain him he spent five years learning how to make rice before he could actually become a sushi chef Amazing. five years making the same thing over and over again I mean so that develops patience and that also shows you that you know even after a year you don't actually it's not that you don't know what you're doing you maybe haven't perfected your craft as much as you could so what he showed me is that never ever be satisfied and always always continue you know pushing yourself and trying to learn more and to grow and his plating I don't know if you've ever seen his plating before his ideas and his food is just staggering um, but his plating for me was just the things he, it's not just plates like he uses he'll go into a uh, like a farm store uh, sorry a farm store like a farm or uh, like the store that we just went yes. in and he'll find little tins and little things and and use those so when you eat his meal you, you often have to kind of you're you're a part of it you know you, you have to pour this in here and you have to oh. add this to this and mix this up and it's so much fun you know so he showed me that a different way of, of cooking so oh. yeah I really love those guys and I would love to cook with both of them actually. oh I love that in Chicago Mrs. Chef Trotter yeah. so much and and um, listeners please make sure you download my kitchen chat with Rochelle Trotter oh, wow. we sat down together and the to stories that. that she yeah. shares Oh, it just gives you an even this. deeper appreciation. Oh, so, oh, great. Now, this is fun. Now, we do have an audience member, Tommy from New York. Tommy, do you have a question for Chef Johnny? Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, what do you think is the hardest part when someone's trying to go from eating normally to being vegetarian, vegan? What's the biggest hump to get over? So the biggest hump to get over is is that it's a hump. So like it's basically what happens is when you try to go vegan, first of all, I'd recommend if you're going to go vegan or vegetarian to always get some kind of guidance. You know, like people think that, oh, it's just food. I can handle it. But food can hurt you, can make you sick. It can, it can I mean, the extremes, it can actually even kill you. So, um, you know, this isn't some small transition you're making. This is a big lifestyle change. And it should be a lifestyle change, not a diet, because a diet has a beginning and an end. Um, a lifestyle change is something, you know, like brushing your teeth or something that you just do. And I think that's a much better way of looking at this because it's such a big integral part of your life and affects everything. Um, so for, think of it as a lifestyle change. Get some guidance from someone you trust that can help you. So when things go wrong, you can correct them quickly and move forward. Um, but other than that, even that person's going to tell you that they, you know, they can't help you get through the just like in the yoga lessons this morning. Those awkward things, you know, some things will pop up and you can't fight them. You just have to deal. Get, let them kind of pass through you so you can get to that other 
you know the, the brighter side right so when you start doing it what happens is um, generally I recommend doing some kind of juicing or something to begin just to get the majority of toxins out of your body um, because you've you've spent a, a quite a f long time years maybe 10 years 20 years accumulating all the toxins and things and developing your lifestyle so you ended up where you are now now if you think that a six seven day cleanse or a two week cleanse or something like that will will make all that go away it's not easy like that and mostly you'll end up getting sick and if you do get sick most of the people come back and blame oh it was the juice that made me sick it was this that made me sick and they'll stop um, so what you need to understand is it's a slow process you know just like if you're tight you can't just do one stretch and be loose you have to <laughs> gradually over time maybe over days over years layer after layer so the same thing with all the junk that's inside you it's like a sewer system you know if it's if it used to be this clear now it's like this you have to slowly peel where peel away those layers so that you can enjoy the process while you're doing it and not feel nauseous and sick um, so usually there's about a week to two week hump um, you start and then you feel really great the first few days and after that then the bad stuff starts kicking in so the the toxins start loosening up in your uh you know at a cellular level but also in in your uh like your in your intestinal tract all the stuff that's caked in there um, will start loosening up and your body start getting getting rid of it and then that usually causes nausea headaches people to feel really negative and down um, and if they're doing it too fast then it's almost too much and they have to stop um, the big thing is drink tons and tons and tons of water um, and then also do lots of salt baths help epsom baths salt baths help pull that stuff out so the idea is again so you can imagine if you had someone guiding you they would as soon as you said oh i'm feeling this they'd be like okay do this and this similar to to grail right so if you didn't have that you'd either stop or push yourself to a point where you would just be it'd just be too much you know and you just could not move forward so the idea that I tell people is like this is such a positive thing that you're doing for yourself so try to make it as as enjoyable as possible and you know and to avoid the mistakes get some help yeah juicing water all those things are really really helpful Does that answer yeah, totally. yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for your question, Tommy. Oh, and thank you so much, no Chef Johnny, for being on Kitchen Chat TV thank on the road. Me. Thank oh. you for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you, dear listeners and viewers, for taking the ride in Canada <laughs> today. <Come> with <laughs> Yes, and thank you for Colleen, and thank you, Jennifer. <laughs> thank you so Good much, everyone. Jennifer Edinger at Fit Your Style for filming it. I think I'm getting stuck in the <laughs> but anyway thank you so much listeners and viewers and thank you so much for tuning into kitchen chat please be in touch with me visit my kitchen kitchenchat.info and please like my facebook page kitchen chat and always remember to take a moment and savor the day